been daydreaming about this picture that Grandin Rhodes put out from the first moment I saw it. If you follow me over on Instagram, a few months ago I posted this photo and was drooling over it. So I started looking at the price. <laughs> okay, in the thumbnail this says over $700. I stopped. I completely stopped adding all the stuff up. I was shocked at how much it was starting to cost. The spooky letters alone that you see in the thumbnail cost $129. So of course my little DIY mind starts working and I'm like, I can get those letters from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, Joanne Fabric, which I ended up finding them at Joanne Fabric. And I can, I have a wreath that kind of looks like that. I could add pumpkins to it. I could paint books black and I can get some orange candles. So I was like, I'm gonna challenge myself to redo this entire scene for a 10th. I think it's probably less than a 10th of the cost that it would cost from Grandin Rhodes. Come along with me so I can show you how I did it and you can do it also. Beautiful scapes like this are not out of our reach. We can all achieve it. It just takes a little bit of a crafty mind and it'll be beautiful for fall. So let's go. Okay, so I'm out here in my totally messy garage. This is still on my list to do, but I have the best neighbors in the whole wide world. So I saw in that photo, as you can see, we're gonna be referencing this photo quite a bit there are a lot of black books in the background. And so I was like, okay, I can do that really cheap. I can run to the thrift store and just buy some books because they're really inexpensive. But <laughs> my neighbors know that I do these videos and I was like, you know what? Let me ask them if they have any books that they're wanting to get rid of. And sure enough, both my neighbors across the street and next door to us had books that they were wanting to get rid of. And so I was like, I'll take them. So this part cost me nothing. Um, I dug through my little stash and I found this ultra matte black rust-oleum spray paint. So I'm gonna try that. If I don't have enough of this, I have leftover black paint from when I did my dining room uh, accent wall. And so I could use that. So I am really lucking out on not having to spend much money here. I know everyone won't have this advantage, but even if you had to go to the thrift store and buy some books and buy some paint, a little bit of paint, that's gonna be way cheaper than what this whole setup would have been over on the expensive site. Okay, I'm gonna disassemble my mantle here in my kitchen because I feel like this mantle looks a lot like the one in the photo. But the best part about this is you don't have to have a mantle to redo this. I think that you could do this on a buffet, if you have a console, different things like that. This can be placed on anything. I'm just so happy to have a mantle that does look kind of like that, so I'm gonna use that. So let's take this one apart and start getting set up how we're gonna do this. Oh man, I have to take my bats down and I have them command stripped up here. I ripped a little bit of paint off. That was rude. Okay, so I can tell that the wreath is on um, a wreath stand and those, the, they have those for sale there. I think they're like $100. So <laughs> I went wandering around in my garage. I honestly have no idea what this is. This belongs to Jason. If you know what this is, let me know. I'll have to ask him, but told me I can use whatever I need. So I'm gonna set that up there and see how it has this little thing. This could be my wreath stand. Um, but I also can tell it's not gonna be tall enough. So I have this black cake stand and I'm gonna set that on there and then hang the wreath from here and hopefully I can disguise this. Or yeah, I don't know. <laughs> thing you can do is wander around your house and look and see what you got. Had I, I would have never guessed that I had this and that I could use. Um, I guess if you had an area that you were doing it on, you could actually, if you were comfortable with it, you could use like a command strip or a nail and hang it at the appropriate level and then no one would even notice. You wouldn't have to use a stand. But I'm gonna try this because yay for finding weird things. Something I'm noticing that's different right off the bat than their wreath stand is this is silver and theirs is black. I don't think Jason would probably appreciate it if I spray painted this. What if I got like black electrical tape and ran it down there so that way the silver would be gone and it would be black? Hmm, let me go see if I can find some of that. Getting crazy over here. Okay, so this isn't gonna be pretty by any means, but I think that the wreath is gonna cover this up. So I'm just gonna, that way it looks black from the front and the sides and doesn't look too weird.
Oh, look at that already. That looks so much better. So first things first, let's go into the attic and see what we can find that looks like it's in the photo. Okay, I knew I had these. So these little candlestick holders kind of look like the ones that are in there. I only have two and I think they have three. So we'll probably have to use something else for the third one. But this is what I came in here for. This wreath right here kind of reminds me of the one, although this has white pumpkins on it, but I am going to get a couple picks of orange pumpkins and add that in and then find ribbon like that's on that wreath. So let's definitely take this one. Okay, I'm not sure what else we're gonna need, but we'll be back. Okay, so obviously I don't have the same wreath, but I grabbed that one that we found upstairs and I went to Michael's and I bought, well, I could only buy three because I noticed there were four on the wreath, but I could only buy three. They're really lacking in their supplies, but I found four or three little orange pumpkins. Um, they were originally $3.99. They were 60% off the day I bought them. So, and I will put down in the description box down below, like the total that I ended up spending and it'll probably be in the thumbnail, but let's get the price tags off so it looks like they have the bow over kind of on the side let me look at the picture again okay so they have the bow over on the side and we'll go ahead and we'll do one like down here okay and then we'll put the bow right there okay it's not exactly the same way but it's pretty close so I found ribbon that matches it almost perfectly with the black and white stripes I think I'm gonna wait and make the bow for here and for the garland that is going across all at the same time so we'll go ahead and we'll move on and we'll come back to that part okay so next let's go ahead and add in our candlesticks that we found that look pretty close to it it looks like they have the tall one next to it and then the short one and they have orange candles on there. So I bought a couple orange candles. They're not exactly the same color, but it's pretty close. And then it looks like next to it, they have a pumpkin. I'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. Okay, so that's looking pretty close to how it is. Okay, next up, let me show you my spooky letters that I bought and let's figure out how we're gonna do the cobwebbing that's on it if you look at the picture. So we gotta figure that out. Okay, so here are the letters that I found at Joanne Fabric. They um, were super inexpensive. They were only like, I think they were on sale and it was like buy one, get one or buy one, get one 50% off. I'll list it all down below. So we just had to figure out the cobwebs that we're gonna put on them that are like in the photo. And my daughter helped me come up with a really cool idea. So let's give it a try. Okay, so I got this crazy way that I'm gonna try and make these cobwebs that come off here. I just practiced and did a little one. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not. I'm probably blocking it. But I'm going to take a hot glue gun. I drew out how big I need it to be according to what the photo looked like. And I'm just going to trace it with hot glue and then let it dry. And then it'll be a little cobweb. And I think I'll spray paint it black. And then that way it'll look just like that. But okay, so wish me luck. Keep in mind, I am no artist. I think it's kind of weird how it like took up the drawing with it. Okay, yay. Now let's spray paint this black and see if this is gonna work. That looks just like it. Wait, is that how they have it going in the picture? Oh no, they got it going this way. That way, oh yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so before I start setting the letters across here and everything, I feel like I better go ahead and put the bow on because I have a feeling that once I start getting this place up here, I'm not gonna wanna pull this back down. So, ugh, making bows is my weakness. So let's give this a try. Okay, I'm pretty disappointed in myself. I just realized I didn't get wired ribbon. Ah, we'll see what we can do. Okay, when I'm looking at the photo, I keep referencing it on my phone. It looks like the one that's on the wreath has one, two, three, four, five loops. Ignore my black paint on my hands. And that little, the tail looks like it's maybe like, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine inches long. Let's see, 
Oh no, it's longer than that. Let's say it's 12 inches long. No, that's too long. Let's do 10. Okay. Does that look about right? Yeah, let's try that. Okay. So I'm just pinching it. Keep in mind, this is not a bow tutorial and I'm sure other people have great ways to do this. So that's gonna be the width of my tail. And then I think I'm gonna make my loops, let's say 12 inches because they'll have to cut over at six. Yeah. We go like that. Yeah. So I'm just pinching. I don't have to twist because I have the same thing on each side. So I'm gonna do one. Is this gonna look right? I'm going to put some floral wire here and then we'll get this all situated. It's not the best, but it's gonna do. Okay, so I can tell that the S is on black books, but I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna put one of these risers. And I'm gonna put that there and then I'm gonna put the books on because remember how there's flowers down there so they're never gonna be able to know. So the S, kind of in there like that and we'll be moving things around. So they had a third black one of the candle stands. I don't have a black one. I have this one, but I think it's gonna be okay. And I'm gonna use that. Now, I'm not sure. I gotta look at the picture again. A little further over. Okay, it looks like a pretty big stack of books for the O. Okay. Ah! I feel like this might be the trickiest part is getting these letters where they belong. This P is not gonna stand up by itself. So, I'm gonna do some double-sided tape and tape it on here. Ta-da! I think I'm gonna go ahead and tape the O down where it belongs. That way, I don't have to worry about anything moving And then it looks like there's another O here, and the K is kind of in the middle. And then there's a candle here somewhere. Hold on, let me see what that is. Hmm. I'll set it right there, and then we'll move it in a little bit. Don't fall. My mantle is not as wide as theirs, so this is making it really difficult. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I need your help really quick. Okay. Okay, for real. See this K? I cannot come up with a way to get it to stay like that. What's wrong with the tape you have on? It's not holding. It's going to fall. Oh, I see. I'm like... If you have any of that wire, and you can take the wire around, or fishing string around that and pull it tight to the pole. Put the Y up on a little thing here. I like Jason's idea about putting the fishing line here on the K. Right now the tape is holding. I know it's not going to, so I'll find something else for that. But okay, so I think the Y goes about right there. And then there's black books over here and a striped pumpkin. So let's see what we can get. That. Okay. And then I have this striped pumpkin. It looks like it's kind of tall about halfway up this. So let's put some stuff here that make it taller. Put another one of these clear risers here and put him there. He's a little short. All right, I feel like we're making really good progress. So now let's find some garland to put here. We'll put our bow and then we have this top part almost all done. And I think it's looking pretty close. Something I noticed is that that garland doesn't look very fallish to me. I see like white flowers and stuff like that. So I have this, hold on. So I have this one, it's kind of springish, but I think if I mix it in with a lamb's ear garland and then we put the ribbon on it, I think it'll be disguised and we won't really know. Um, and then we'll add in pumpkins because there's pumpkins on that one. 
and that'll tie all that in together. So let's go, I have lamb's ear garland. Let me go grab that. We'll mix those two together and then um, use command hooks to put this on here. Let's put our bow in the middle and then they had ribbon that went like that and then they had pumpkins in there. We're coming back to this. Just gonna set that up there out of the way. Okay, and then I bought four of these pumpkins because that's all they had. And I think I'll just do two on each side and that'll help bring it together. Are we liking this? Let me know in the comments down below. I mean, I feel like this has been a little bit of a cluster of a video trying to make. Basically, I'm looking at a picture, trying to recreate it for you guys. But it's been easy, but I'm one of those people where I'm like, oh, that's a little to the left. I need to make it just like that. But you don't need to do that in your own home if you're just wanting to get the same feel and it to just kind of look like it. So let me get these in, get our K where it's supposed to go. And then I noticed there's pumpkins and stuff down below. I don't know if I'll be able to do that with my fireplace, but we're gonna give it a try. I ended up putting two books right here. And then that way that raised that up just a smidge more. I ended up raising this candle up. It's on a wine glass back behind there because I realized it was down too far. And then I just realized that it has a black and white ribbon just tied around it like that matched the one that went in there. So I had a tiny, tiny, tiny little piece left. So I'm just gonna tie what I have around it. It's better than nothing. So let's put that around it so that way. Okay, so that's close. Okay, so now we need to make our bats. Okay, so my bats are not exactly the same. I just found little bats. They have like skeleton bats. I didn't find any of those. I just found regular little ones at Michael's, uh, little die cut ones. You could, if you had a Cricut, you could cut these out. These were just a couple bucks. It looks like they have six of them. I'm just gonna punch a hole in each little wing. They have theirs hanging upside down because it's like a little skeleton, but I think, I don't know. I think I'm gonna hang mine like this. And they have six of them. So I think I'll just do that and maybe like string fishing line in between and then just hook it on each one of my command strips on that side. So that's how I'm going to do it. I have the six bats. Look at me. I literally have a fishing pole. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. Okay, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and do the toilet paper uh, pumpkins. I'm gonna undo it a little bit more than normal, see if I can get it a little more fluffy. It's just so cheap and so easy. And yes, it's not gonna be exact. Ah! That's not what I wanted to have happen. What's happening to my toilet paper? This will be the easiest way to get some buffalo check pumpkins without having to do like a ton of DIY. I'm gonna make three because I saw three in the photo. And yes, they're not as big, but it's still gonna be cute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is my pumpkins can't really sit in here very well. And in the photo, it kind of just looks like a, like a black abyss to me. So I went and I got a black tablecloth and I'm going to use this to cover this up and then make different heights for my pumpkins to sit.
that look? That's not too bad. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you love this as much as I do. You know, it's not dead on, but it is so close. And for the amount of money that we spent, I'm pretty proud of it. So please let me know in the comments down below if any of you guys give this a try and I would love to see what you do. Send me a picture over on Instagram or Facebook and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.